Hey everyone, Beardo speaking, and you are watching another episode of Minutia Minute, and I've got some comic book reviews for you for yesterday. Um, it wasn't Wednesday, but comic books came out nonetheless. It was, of course, Free Comic Book Day. Um, I apologize for the lateness of this video. I was hoping to get it up yesterday, but I just didn't quite get there. Um, I had to work all day yesterday, I ended up staying late at work, and so I didn't get to the comic book shop until relatively late. I was genuinely afraid that there weren't going to be any free comic books left, and I was going to be really sad. But luckily, the two that I really absolutely wanted to make sure that I got my hands on, I did get. So that was exciting. There was a third book that I was hoping to pick up, but unfortunately I missed that one. But um, the two most important ones that I wanted, I got. So that was that was a, a win all around. All right. Um, first off, I got a couple of books that um, aren't technically part of Free Comic Book Day, but uh, my comic book store was giving them out. The first one was uh, Vertigo number one. One dollar issue. Basically, it's a reprint of Fables issue one. Um, this was released a couple of years ago, basically with the purpose of promoting the the first graphic novel, or I should say, the first trade paperback, um, volume one, Legends in Exile. Um, and I mean, it was great in graphic novel form, and it's great in single issue form too. So, <laughs> already read that one. Not a whole lot to say about it, but it was kind of cool to get it. Um, next up. I got the free preview for Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which has been on shelves for a couple of weeks, but um, I just picked it up yesterday um, as part of Free Comic Book Day, and leafed through it. I didn't read it in great detail. Um, I kind of skimmed through it mostly, and overall I have to say I wasn't really that impressed with it. Um, I enjoy the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo story. I've seen both versions of the movie. I've seen... Um, I'm sorry, I've read part of the book so far. Um, I've read more than what you see in this particular issue, at least. And so, I mean, that's one of the reasons I kind of skimmed through it, because, you know, I mean, how many different ways can you retell this story um, when you're staying really true to the novel, especially? Like, I mean, nothing's going to change. You know exactly what's going to happen. So it kind of takes some of the luster out of it. But that's not what's actually wrong with this book. The problem I had with it was really just sort of the way it was adapted by Denise Mina. Um, the artwork in the book is pretty solid, but the writing just doesn't work for me. And I think it is very true to the book, but it's one of those, since they're condensing it down into a comic book format, they're cutting through a lot of stuff, and so you end up with a lot of random scenes that are sort of tacked together with sort of, you know, word balloons that kind of cross from one scene into the next scene, but there's no real cohesion in the story. If you were reading it for the first time and you weren't completely unfamiliar with the girl with the dragon tattoo, um, you would have no idea what's going on, in my opinion. It's just sort of a lot of random scenes, um, sort of like the, you know, the key scenes of the book for sure, but of course, you know, just because it's a key scene doesn't mean it's the only necessary scene to watch, you know what I mean? So. It's just kind of a lot of random stuff that happens, and it doesn't really add up to anything. Um, I don't know if that's because this is the free preview and there's pages missing in between, you know, certain pages within this preview, but um, overall I, re I really wasn't impressed. And you'd think that a girl with the dragon tattoo vertigo book would be kind of a no-brainer, but... Um, yeah, didn't really cut it. It's not something I was planning on getting anyway, uh, but if for any of you guys out there who are Big Girl with the Dragon Tattoo fans and you're thinking about getting the graphic novel, definitely check out the free preview before you get it because I wouldn't want you to spend 30 bucks on something that you might be kind of disappointed in. All right, and that's what I got for sort of free books that weren't officially part of Free Comic Book Day. On to the official books. First of all, I got Valiant. 2012, and this is basically a free preview of all the stuff in the Valiant relaunch. Um, it was kind of an interesting read. Um, the Man of War book is already out. I saw it last week. Really, really nice artwork from Kerry Nord in that issue and in the preview here. Uh, he did Conan a few years ago, and that stuff was just awesome. And um, 
I don't know, it's one of those, I mean, it seems like an interesting enough character. I don't know a whole lot about Valiant. Um, I'm sure like someone like Howler Mouse could tell me every tiny little detail there is to know, <laughs> um, but I have no clue. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with it, but that's about it. I don't really have any real working knowledge of Valiant and the whole relaunch that has suddenly happened. Um, it's one of those, I mean, I'd be interested in reading Man of War, but at the same time, I mean, I can't afford to take on an entirely, you know, a, a yet another universe with all of its own continuity burden going along with it. So um, I'm probably going to pass on the Valiant titles for now. However, um, if you guys are picking up Valiant books, please review them because I'm curious to see what you guys think. I'm curious to know a little bit more about them. So um, interested, but probably won't be picking any up. All right, the next book that I got is one that I was not really expecting to enjoy. I just kind of got it for a laugh. And that was Dinosaurs vs. Aliens. Um, this is a story created by, by Barry Sonnenfeld, who is... Um, he's a film director. He directed Men in Black. He directed Get Shorty. I believe he directed Get uh, Big Trouble. Um, fairly talented director. Sort of likes to direct sort of quirky sort of slightly dark comedies, but mostly quirky comedies. And he's also a very established uh, director of cinematography, um, did a lot of cinematography work in the 80s before he moved on to directing. So pretty decent talent. Um, I feel like it's been kind of wasted on the Men in Black films. Uh, you know, the first Men in Black film was kind of fun, but after that, it's just now they're doing a third one and I'm just a little exhausted from it. <laughs> so hopefully he gets sort of his creative spark back and does something different. Um, on top of Barry Sonnenfeld's name attached to this, we also have Grant Morrison, who did the actual writing on the comic book. And um, despite the talent, I was really not expecting a whole lot from this book because it's dinosaurs versus aliens. And um, I mean, how much can you really mine out of aliens being, you know, eaten by giant prehistoric, you know, wild animals, right? However, this book really surprised me because I actually really enjoyed this and I want to show you some of the artwork in it because it really has some breathtaking artwork. And um, one of the things you'll notice about this is the dinosaurs, there's an interesting twist with the dinosaurs. Um, like I said, I mean, you kind of expect it to be sort of wild animals eating futuristic alien creatures, but you open it up and you get, I'll show you one particular place here, and you get a look at the dinosaurs and you see they have these sort of like headdresses on, uh, so it looks like they actually have kind of a, somewhat of a culture, so that's kind of interesting. I'm really curious to see sort of the Dinotopia twist that uh, Grant Morrison's taking this on. Um, and honestly, I mean, I, I got to this part and I instantly thought, you know, Grant Morrison could write the hell out of a book like this. So, kind of exciting, and like I said, great artwork. Um, if this was something that was being released in single issue form, I would probably pick it up. However, I think it's just gonna be a graphic novel, which I don't know that I'm willing to shell out 20 bucks, 20, 30 bucks for it, but um, it's definitely something that if it comes across my table, I'll definitely read it. Um, the actual preview that you get is only a handful of pages. However, you have a lot of extra material here. You get uh, afterwards by both Barry Sonnenfeld and Grant Morrison. You get a whole bunch of like sketch work and um, concept designs. Really beautiful color art here. Um, you also get some pencils and some layouts. And then finally you get some script pages. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, um, if you didn't pick this up, I, there were actually a lot of copies of this at my local comic book shop, so maybe if you next time you swing on uh, for your Wednesday comics, if they have an extra copy, check it out because it's actually pretty pretty cool stuff. I mean, how beautiful is this? Is the artwork in this seriously? All right. Anyway, that was Dinosaurs vs. Aliens, and uh, not expecting to like it, but actually very impressed. So can't go wrong. What can I say? It's free comic book day. Can't complain. All right. Uh, next up, um, arguably my favorite book out of Free Comic Book Day this year was one of the two flip books that came out from Dark Horse. One flip book was Half the Guild and Half Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The second book is Half Serenity. 
and then half Star Wars. And I'll pull this out and flip it around so you can see the other cover. Here's the Star Wars cover. And this was a really, really great flip book. It's written by Zach Whedon. Uh, both stories are written by Zach Whedon. And you have sort of very similar stories that are told. Um, you have Mal from Serenity, who is very much a Han Solo type character, who's you know, kind of married to his ship, dedicated to being a loner, um, very gruff and disagreeable and all that fun stuff. And in the Serenity book, someone basically comes along and decides they're gonna hijack his ship. Same thing happens in the Star Wars book. So um, you basically you get a flip book here in which the story is sort of parallel between both books, which is kind of cool. Uh, I have to say, Zach Whedon really wrote the hell out of this, too. Um, he really, really knows the voice of Mal. Um, I really, I heard Nathan Fillion's voice when I was reading this. And for the Han Solo Chewbacca adventure, um, while I didn't necessarily hear Harrison Ford's voice, um, the banter between Han Solo and Chewie was really, really enjoyable. So, all in all, this book was a really, really great read, especially for a book that was free. Um, also, I didn't know about um, Zoe in Serenity. There is a... If you haven't read any of the other Serenity comics, you may be surprised by what you see in here. There's kind of a little shocking moment. It was very shocking for me. And then I went online to see if that was like something new or if that was something that had been established. And it is something that was uh, came up in an issue of the Serenity comic book or I guess one of the graphic novels or whatever, a, a one-shot issue, um, involving Zoe and something that happens after Wash dies or something that comes to light after Wash dies. So any Serenity fan check this out. This is fantastic. And Star Wars is Star Wars. It's fun, but, um, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it was good, but Serenity really blew me away. All right. And then the last book that I got, let me just rebag this here, was, drumroll, DC's The New 52. And, um, I gotta say, this was a really, really great read. When I saw the solicit for this and I saw Pandora off to the side here, I got really, really excited. Um, DC does a really good job of having uh, free comic books that really have some interesting and kind of important continuity to them. Uh, a couple of years ago, they did um, Black as Night issue zero as a free comic book, which was really, really cool. Really great story with um, Barry Allen and Hal Jordan kind of talking about you know, basically coming back to life and sort of trying to find your place in the world again. Um, really a nice poignant moment at the beginning of Blackest Night as part of Free Comic Book Day. Now this one is has some really, really interesting um, continuity elements, especially around Pandora. So for those of you who don't know who Pandora is, she is seen in the background of Flashpoint sort of a, I don't want to say puppet master, but definitely kind of pulling the strings and changing things um, in the continuity of DC, Vertigo, and, you know, the mashing of all those things together. Um, she's definitely a player in that, but you don't really know who she is. You just see her in the background and kind of think, who's that? And then, when any of the DC New 52 books you read, in issue one of all of the issues, she appears in the background, just kind of checking in on all the different heroes in the DC universe. And then finally she pops up very briefly, I think it was at the end of Justice League, I don't remember for sure, uh, probably issue six or so. And you still didn't get much with her, but you find out that she has something to do with the Phantom Stranger, which is kind of intriguing. The new 52 Free Comic Day um, book that DC solicited here really gives you a lot of backstory on Pandora that's very, very interesting, very, very magic-driven. Um, we're definitely going to get back into the magic side of the DC Universe, which is something that they've tried to revamp multiple times in the last 10 years. Um, I hope this time around it kind of sticks, because there's a lot of fun magic stuff going on in the DCU, and incorporating some of the magic that we've seen in like the Vertigo comics uh, really could give it some interesting edge. Um, I have to say, given, I mean, you, you get to see the Rock of Eternity in here, 
And um, given that we have the Shazam backup story in the Justice League right now, I know a lot of people think it's kind of one-off-y, and it's like, well, who really cares? It's just tacking on an extra dollar. But I think, given that we see Pandora on the Rock of Eternity in this issue, uh, means that the Shazam backup story in Justice League is going to end up being a lot more important than... Um, we've thought so far uh, for those of us reading DC books. So anyway, really, really interesting book. Lots of great art from Jim Lee, Ivan Reese, um, Kenneth Rockefert, who does um, Red Hood and the Outlaws, for those of you guys um, ballsy enough to read that book, despite the con controversy. Um, and I do have to show you guys, there's a really, really cool gatefold cover, or I'm not cover, uh, gatefold interior page here, right at the end of the story we get this awesome big battle royale shot pretty cool stuff good art by Jim Lee we also get introduced in this book uh, to a new Green Lantern uh, let me show you that who's uh, this fella right here and we also get teased for Earth 2 towards the beginning of the book which obviously Earth 2 has just started um, but they do pop up in this book as well so pretty cool stuff. And then the icing on the cake is the backup cover. There is a really awesome looking poster for The Dark Knight Rises. How awesome is that? All right, anyway, so that was what I got for free comic book day. Um, hope you guys got the books that you wanted. Hope you enjoyed them. Uh, free comic book day, I think, is a, a happy day for every nerd. Um, the first the first Saturday in May is always looked forward to uh, by anyone who reads comics, I think. So anyway, that's what I got. Um, I also did pick up some books um, while I was there. Everything in the store was 20% off, so that was pretty cool. I wished I could have spent more money, um, so... I didn't quite get everything that I wanted, but I did uh, pick up a few essentials that I've been uh, wanting to pick up, so that was kind of exciting. I'll share those with you here real quick. The first one uh, was Detective Comics 672. This is a um, Night Quest Crusade title, and um, for those of you regular viewers out there, you know that I am going to be uh, showing off all of my sort of Nightfall stuff and Bane stuff leading into um, The Dark Knight Rises. I picked this off, uh, or sorry, I picked this up uh, to help complete that collection. Um, I also got a whole bunch of Batman Legacy books. Uh, Legacy was a crossover that um, happened shortly after Contagion, uh, for those of you guys who are familiar with Contagion, and um, I didn't get the whole run, but I got a whole bunch of them. Uh, so, first of all, let me see, I got them out of order here, let me just really quick reorganize. Alright, first of all, we got Batman 533, which is the prelude to Legacy. And then we got here, Detective Comics 700, which is part one. And then we've got Batman 534, part five of Legacy. Robin 33, part seven. And then finally, the epilogue, which was in Detective Comics 702. And I'm not sure exactly how many issues there were in that run, um, but uh, I'm looking forward to reading it, so hopefully I can find the rest of these issues uh, in the not-too-distant future. All right, I also picked up a couple more uh, Batman titles that are basically filling in some more blank spots. Um, I'm actually getting really, really close to completing my... Uh, modern age Batman run basically from year one all the way up through the current so uh, as soon as I get the rest of those I'm anticipating I'll have the rest of them before probably before the end of the summer I'm guessing um, I'm getting very very close so uh, as soon as I have those I will have a massive massive um, collection showing in which I show you all of my Batman Modern Age stuff, uh, which I'm looking forward to. Hopefully I get the rest of those soon and hope you're looking forward to it too. Anyway, so uh, going towards that I got 516, Batman 527, and then Batman 528. Kind of a fun, kooky little cover there. I love when they uh, when they play with the logo like this, and they don't do that enough in comics anymore, especially with you know the DC New 52, where everything's just sort of like this 
really awful like sort of Microsoft Paint logo. It's all very set in stone. And I like when they, you know, like when they change it up a bit. And when it's part of the artwork, I think it really adds a lot to the to the logo. Anyway, uh, so that's everything I got for back issues. I did also pick up a couple of fairly recent comics. Um, first of all, I got Eye Vampire number five, which is. Um, Issue six was the prelude to the night of the or to the rise of the vampires storyline that crossed over with Justice League Dark. I really enjoyed that crossover, and part five is sort of the unofficial start to that because um, basically this is where he gets to Goth where Andrew Bennett gets to Gotham City and meets up with Batman, which is what you see in issue six if you picked up the Rise of the Vampires prelude. And I really, I mean, for Rise of the Vampires, like, I, Vampire, really stole the show. I really enjoyed this book, so I'm really excited to read this issue. And then finally, um, I said, I swore up and down that I was only going to get one second wave title, and I had always planned on it being Dial H, but I ended up getting Earth 2. And I loved Earth 2. It was my pick of the week last week. I really, really enjoyed it. But um, then Ghost Critic had to go and review Dial H, and I had to go pick it up. So <laughs> I did get Dial H, number one. I'm really excited to read that. Um, just looking at the cover, I mean, it looks like a blast. So I'm really excited for that. Anyway, um, that wraps up everything I got on Free Comic Book Day. So I hope you guys had a really successful one, and um, I'll see everybody really soon. I've got my review of... Uh, my first movie review for Comic Book the Movie coming up pretty soon. And then, if nothing else, I will see you guys in time for the next Wednesday comic book haul in just a couple of days. So, see everybody later. Bye.